Okay, YouTube usually has a 15 minute uh, uh, time limit. Uh, so uh, I'm continuing this uh, presentation on this uh, second uh, video. Um, so the enzymes that are found in the mitochondria here are uh, numbers one, two, three. Uh, you're looking at numbers five. Uh, you're also looking at uh, number nine. So uh, succinate dehydrogenase, Krebs cycle, citrus synthase, Krebs cycle, both in the mitochondria. Pyruvate dehydrogenase, uh, mitochondrial enzyme that converts pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. Uh, then you've got your lactate dehydrogenase, the H form, converts lactate to pyruvate in the mitochondria. And then you've got your cytochrome oxidase, which is in your electron transport chain, which is located in your mitochondria. And the last answer here, hopefully uh, it's easy for you to fill in. It should be exactly the same as the previous answer. So uh, any of the enzymes that are found in the mitochondria would increase with endurance training, whereas the enzymes that are outside the mitochondria would not increase with endurance training. So for this answer, you're looking at all the enzymes that are located in the mitochondria. It's one, two, three, five, and nine. So uh, those are your best answers for this uh, review. Okay, uh, the main topic I wanted to cover was whole body glucose metabolism. Um, so the importance of blood glucose uh, during exercise is that uh, blood glucose have to remain, remain stable uh, essentially because your brain and nervous system depend heavily on glucose and that glucose is stored as glycogen in the muscle. Uh, so during the exercise, glucose is taken up by, uh, from the blood by the muscle and then it's broken down through glycolysis uh, to derive energy. Um, and so that would imply that your glucose level is going to go down while you're exercising. But because your brain and nervous tissue are so dependent on glucose, your body likes to defend the blood glucose levels. Essentially, if your blood glucose level got too low, your, your brain wouldn't get enough energy and you'd end up, end up uh, passing out. Uh, in extreme cases, uh, you could go into a coma and actually die if your blood glucose levels got too low. Um, so if you do assess glucose levels while someone's exercising, the blood glucose levels actually stay remarkably stable, despite the fact that the muscle is continually taking up glucose from the blood into the muscle. So why does blood glucose stay relatively constant during exercise? Uh, it's because uh, during exercise, glucose is released from the liver. So your muscle is continually taking up glucose from the blood, but at the same time, your glucose is being released from the liver to keep your blood glucose stores stable. And again, that's because uh, that's important because your brain and nervous system rely on glucose as their fuel source. So this is what's happening during exercise. Uh, your liver is releasing glucose. Glucose is then being taken up by the muscle. Um, so the release of, of glucose from the liver balances the uptake of glucose from the muscle so that your blood glucose levels stay relatively stable. And uh, uh, this next question, uh, if, if muscle uses glucose during exercise and liver releases glucose, which can then be used by the muscle, how does the body prevent the liver from running out of glucose? Uh, one thing you'll see is that the liver has a certain amount of glycogen stores. Those can be broken down to glucose during exercise and then replenished during recovery. Um, but eventually your glycogen levels are also going to run out. So the answer to this question is, uh, you can make glucose out of other substrates in the liver during exercise. One of those substrates is lactate, and we covered this uh, pathway before called the Cori cycle, where glucose is being broken down in the muscle to form lactate. The lactate then goes into the blood, and it can be taken up by the muscle to be made back into glucose. 
and then that goes in a cycle. So this is one way by which the liver can help to maintain blood glucose levels during exercise is by forming new glucose uh, from substrates such as lactate. So the liver uh, has this uh, kind of unique pathway, uh, you know, in that it can make glucose out of other metabolites. And this uh, pathway is called gluconeogenesis. So it just refers to the making of new glucose. Uh, and the main organ where this occurs is the liver, especially during exercise. Now, the liver can make uh, glucose out of lactate, but it can also make glucose out of other substrates. And that includes amino acids from protein breakdown. So you can have protein breakdown during exercise in your muscle. The amino acids could go into the blood and then be taken up by the liver and made into glucose. And you can also have um, uh, glucose made from uh, fats that are stored in adipose tissue. So in your adipose tissue, you store uh, fats, which are called fatty acids, um, and they're stored kind of a three at a time in a molecule called the triglyceride. Uh, triglyceride therefore has three fatty acids and they're bound to what's called a glycerol backbone. So the glycerol essentially is a three carbon molecule. Um, that can be, when, when fats are broken down from your adipose tissue during exercise, the fatty acids and glycerol can go into the blood. The glycerol portion can be taken up by the liver. It's, it's a three carbon molecule. It can be combined with another glycerol to form a six carbon glucose. So that's another way that you're liver makes uh, uh, glucose during exercise. Now during exercise, you release these uh, hormones. Um, three of them are epinephrine, glucagon, cortisol, uh, and these all stimulate that metabolic pathway in the liver that makes glucose. So they all stimulate gluconeogenesis. They each have slightly different effects. So this is the effect of glucagon. Glucagon helps you to take up amino acids and lactate from the blood, uh, and those are then put into gluconeogenesis in the liver. Uh, epinephrine acts a little bit differently. So epinephrine allows you to, it acts on adipose tissue to break down triglycerides. Uh, so one of those breakdown products is glycerol. And then it stimulates gluconeogenesis from either glycerol or lactate that's released from the skeletal muscle. And lastly, cortisol that's produced during exercise, it acts as kind of a catabolic hormone. It breaks down triglyceride from your adipose tissue, again, forming glycerol, which can be taken up and put through gluconeogenesis. Uh, cortisol also breaks down muscle protein. Uh, so then the amino acids from that protein breakdown go into the blood and those can be taken up by the liver uh, to form uh, new glucose. question here is uh, which hormone has the opposite effect of the gluconeogenic hormone. So it has uh, opposing effects um, and it's high after a meal uh, when you're resting. Uh, and the answer here is insulin. And insulin's effect is that it packs away things that you might consume during a meal like fat, protein, or carbohydrates away into tissue. Um, so it's a, it's a, it, it's a hormone that uh, essentially will uh, pack away fats in the adipose tissue. Uh, so, it, you know, it's associated with having greater body fat, um, but it'll, it'll also pack away amino acids into muscle. So it's actually quite an anabolic hormone and it also packs away carbohydrates into muscle and liver. And its release is inhibited during exercise. So exercise, you kind of want the opposite effect you want to be releasing fats from adipose tissue. Uh, you want to be breaking down carbohydrates. So you don't want to be packing those things away. You want to be breaking those down for energy. So it's inhibited. The release of insulin is inhibited during exercise. So usually when you do a blood measurement on someone while they're exercising, their insulin levels are low. Uh, and this just shows a summary of the effects of insulin. So 
again, it packs away fats into adipose tissue. So the triglycerides here would come from uh, fats that would go into your blood after a meal. Um, you get amino acids that come from protein breakdown after a meal, and those would be packed away into muscle. So as I mentioned, insulin is actually quite an anabolic hormone. It can actually build up your muscle mass because of this. Uh, it also builds up your fat mass if you're consuming a lot of fat. Um, and it also packs away glucose that appears in your blood from the breakdown of carbohydrates after you consume a meal. And those uh, glucose molecules are then stored away in the liver as glycogen, or they can go into muscle. And if you're at rest, then those would also be stored as glycogen. So they would go up this way to be stored as glycogen. And uh, that's it for today. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can send me an email.